Right, this is not an exploring video, we've been here before, if you want to see that one, there's a link in the description below. One question I keep getting over and over and over and over again is how do we take photos in the pitch black like this? Um, we currently have the lamp on the little GoPro down there. Uh, I apologise in advance, a lot of this video is going to be very dark, but it helps to demonstrate how it's done. Now, first things first, we, so, very quickly, uh, Nikon D3200 uh, Sigma 10x20mm lens that we're using for this one. Now, just to start off with, I'm just going to show you why I don't use a flash gun for long tunnels like this one. So if we just get it turned on, and I've already set this up so that we can do it. So if we just take, uh, let me turn this lamp off for a second. Right, okay, hopefully this isn't too dark. It's going to get darker this video though, so let's turn the light off, we'll do a flash and I'll show you. Right, so this is how it looks. If you'll notice, there's shadows all around the edges where the flash hasn't been able to uh, completely cover the image and obviously if you look further down the tunnel it's just black, you can't see it. That's why I don't use flash guns, which moves us on to how we do it. So let's get rid of the flash gun. So flash gun's gone. Now what you want to do, I'm not going to go through how to use a camera as in let's focus it, let's do this, that and the other. The camera's focused, it's ready to go. Important thing is for this is once it's focused, if you've been using autofocus, you need to turn that off. Focus it, turn autofocus off. Now, it's a good idea to become familiar with the exposure triangle. Uh, if I can find an image, uh, a picture of that, I'll put it up now. Long story short, there is there's three variables: your ISO, your aperture, and uh, your shutter time. Change one, typically you have to change one of the others in order to get the photo to come out on it. Because we're in the pitch black, that's not the case. It's a little bit different. So what I'm going to do, the aperture, I'm going to be putting it on f22, which if you know about cameras, that, that is like the least amount of light you can let in, uh, which is kind of contrary to what you'd think we do. You'd think we want to let as much light in as possible, but we don't. When you reduce the amount of light coming in, you get a greater depth of field, which means that it will be in focus much further down the tunnel, so F22. The next thing that works against this is the ISO. So if we compare ISO 100 to ISO 2300, uh, sorry, 3200, ISO 3200 is more sensitive to light, so it'll give you a brighter picture. But again, we're doing the reverse. We want ISO 100, we want it as uh, least sensitive to light as possible and it will be a much darker photo. Again, that gives you more clarity in the image. Which leaves us with the last variable, which is the shutter time and that's where it's key. Now, when you take a picture, you press the button, it goes click and then you're taking your photo in a fraction of a second. Here we're going to be taking our photo and that shutter is going to be open for a long, long time. So, what we'll do, we'll put it into the manual. Uh, actually, let's, let's actually show you what we're doing, shall we? So, so, on the top dial, you want it in manual. Once that's here, let's have a quick look. So, as you can see, I've got it... Hold on, let me turn that off a second. Oh, there we go. So, it's set at F22. Uh, the ISO is... Oh, hold on. So, the ISO is 200. Um, you can use ISO 100 or 200. Um, and then I've set the exposure time, if we do that, look, 10 seconds, 8 seconds, 5 seconds, we want it all the way to bulb, and then we're going to set it to remote time, uh, remote trigger. Um, it's very important, the remote trigger and the, hold on, let's get that so we can see down the tunnel, there we go. So, your remote trigger is very important and so is a tripod, otherwise you just give up, because that ain't going to happen. Tripod definitely, because otherwise it's going to be shaky, it's going to be all over the place and it'll be blurry. You can get away with that on a remote, but you have to put it on a 10 second timer, and then you're limited um, by the exposure time, probably a maximum of 30 seconds, but we want longer than 30 seconds, hence why we've got the remote to both open and close the shutter. <sighs> right, now I can show you some more of the technique. So, 
There's a particular brand of torch. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. It's pretty easy to figure out. It's the one that does this. And they're German. <laughs> now, the reason why I like this torch is if you shine it on, if you shine it all right there, you can see that the light distribution is almost perfect with the exception of a slight halo at the very edge. That helps to um, evenly paint it in. So let's turn this light on the, uh, on the GoPro off for a second. So we've just worked on the torch light now. So we've got this set up, it's ready to take pictures, and this is where you have to start light painting. Now I'll explain as I go. So there we go, so we've opened the shutter. So now what we'll do, we move around. We want to evenly paint in the light. Now, you can do this for a long time because we're only letting in a tiny amount of light. Now, to get the, get the back of the tunnel, we use something that me and Badger coined the SAR effect. And this is where this torch comes in. So we slowly go in and out, like that. But what's important as well, because there's tunnels going left and right, you want to move left to right. And you want to go up and down. And this helps to eliminate shadow from your image. Now I think we're pretty much good on that exposure, so we're going to stop it. There we go, so we turn that off. Uh, let's turn this back on for a second. Uh, now this camera takes a while to expose, so I'll, I'll edit. Right, it's finished processing, so now if I bring you over to the camera, you can see what we get, which I'll... There we go, so that's nice and even. Uh, there's a little bit of shadow down there, so under normal circumstances I would retake that image. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen now for you, unedited, so you can see it. Um, yeah, you can see there's a bit of shadow in the side tunnels. Um, yeah, under normal circumstances I would retake that shot, but as this is just a tutorial, we won't worry about trying to get this one perfect. Um, next step, light painting. Right, so, next trick, a uh, bit of light painting you would have seen on our channel banner we've written. It was actually in these times we did it, and funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can, using light, write words or pictures on the walls using light. Uh, far better way to graffiti it is not permanent. Let's <laughs> move that, I'm going to step over it, because you have to work a little bit this. So again, I'm using exactly the same settings as I was using before, but I've switched torches. Same manufacturer. Yeah, but what we're going to do, I'm going to leave this in like this. So that when I put it next to the wall, it's very bright like that, yeah? Now when you do this, essentially what you're doing, let's say I wanted to draw a circle, just hold it close to the wall, but you have to bear in mind where you are in comparison to the camera. If I'm still in front of the camera and I'm doing this, you're going to get my outline. So you need to make sure that if the camera's here, you're off at one side like this, so it can see everything you're doing. So, very quick go at that. So let me turn the light off on the lamp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a picture. I'm going to turn the torch off because we're going to use it on momentary press. Because that way, like this, that's how you can draw letters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw my picture, I'm then going to turn the torch off, I'm going to move behind my camera over, over this way, and then I'm going to very, very quickly flash the tunnel just a tiny bit, just to light it up a bit. If you do it too much, you'll drown out what you've done wrong. So let's give this a try. Just see where I am in comparison. Okay, go. Now I'm going to move back, try not to trip over anything, put the light on, quick little flash, stop the exposure. And we'll see if Dave noticed what I drew. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there we go. <laughs> okay, so that is the ER Dave, I'll show you what it is. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> here it is on the screen. I know, I know, I'm a big kid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how you do it, and you can do the same with lettering as well. So yeah, that's how you can do writing and pictures. Right, so for this one, I am going to put you guys underneath the tripod, so you can see straight down the tunnel to see what I'm doing. Now for this one, I'm going to ask Dave for a hand. Okay. 
Right, okay. So, like an idiot, I've forgotten my LEDs, my string, my carabiner, so I can't do any of the LED light painting, but we can still do some weird stuff with the lens. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll do a stripy tunnel, and then when I get to the end of the tunnel, I'm gonna be in the pitch black, I'll take the torch apart to expose the LED, and we'll do some weird little trails down here. Which in fact, for that, what I'm gonna do, I am gonna change my aperture to f mm, we'll do it on f16 it's going to be uh, the light's not going to be evenly distributed so we need a bit more sensitivity <laughs> I'm going to do a very quick flash of this back wall just to illuminate it a bit so you get something at the end of the tunnel. Uh, now I'm going to take it apart. Now I'm, going to, I'm actually going to put my finger over the top of the LED so it goes red. And then I'm going to come down the tunnel like this is burning my fingers. I'm going to be quick. Very quick because this is burning my hand. Ah! That's it. Oh, never touch, directly touch Cree LED. Oh, damn, that was hot. So yeah, let's wait for it to expose. I forgot to turn the bloody camera lamp off though, so this might be a bit bright. Might have to try again. Right, okay, so I forgot to turn this lamp off on the camera, so this might be well overexposed, but it'll be a good, uh, good example of overexposure for you and how too much light can completely wreck it. Don't know, might get lucky. Camera's still processing, so we'll edit now. Right, here we go. So yeah, this is massively overexposed. Hold on, let me turn the lamp off here so that the camera can act. Stop flashing your stupid thing. Okay, so it's kind of worked, but that is massively overexposed, so you don't get the right effect. You can kind of see what I was going for down the middle. You can see the red light in my hand. I don't think we'll do that for the second go. So let's try again. Right, so this time I've turned the lamp and the camera off, we should get a much better uh, picture out of this. So, uh, are you ready, Dave? Yeah, mate, ready. Go. And I'm going to light up this back wall again so that you've got something in the back of the photo to look at. And if you can hit that button, mate. Yep. Yeah. That's it. So. So we've now finished our exposure, and let's see what it looks like. Right, so our exposure is finished on that shot, and here it is on the screen. As you can see, um, you well, that's the effect you get when you, when you do that. I mean, if you want to change your aperture, you can make it brighter, darker, you can do whatever you like. With a bit of editing afterwards, you can even change the colour like this. And like this. And even do it really crazy like this. Right, that's it. So that is the very basics. Um, if people find this video interesting or useful, um, then you know, leave loads of comments below. Um, I am by no means an expert. Uh, I mean, it's taken me a couple of years to get up to this stage. Um, there are people out there that are way better at it, and there are people out there that are really bad at it. But uh, I'm doing all right. So yeah, if you found it interesting and you would like to do for me to do another one at a later point to cover things like um, uh, use of LEDs, different colours, uh, wire wall, things like that, then we can do that. But uh, yeah, leave your comments and we'll see you next time. Cheers.